Good blessed uh, throwback Thursday, March 18, 2021. It's about 6.55 uh, p.m. I greet all human beings all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. Doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor religious beliefs may be. Doesn't matter whether you're the richest or the poorest person on the face of this earth. Doesn't matter if you're the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. Doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor my proclaimed enemies. Doesn't matter whether you like me, my YouTube channel, Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, I-V-I-V-Y. I encourage all people, even my enemies, which I have some already that watches because you can learn something. You know, you can learn something from a fool. But anyway, uh, I encourage you to watch it. It doesn't cost you nothing but your undivided attention. Uh, some people going to like it and some not. If you like the truth, then you will like my YouTube channel. If you don't like the truth, I encourage you not to watch it. Because that's all I'm going to tell is the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me God. I affirm that. The Bible tell me not to square. But anyway, what I want to talk about today, y'all, is uh, we got to be careful in this day and age. Uh, I have to always go back to Wednesday uh, uh, January the 6th, 2021 in Washington, D.C. That showed me a lot. That showed my two young daughters a lot. And that showed anybody with open eyes. You see what I'm saying? They showed them a lot. It showed us a lot. It showed us that racism is still alive and up and running in the United States. Not just here in Charleston, Missouri, where I'm at. This is just a, a Mike Nuke part of racism right here. It's like a speck. But, but Washington, D.C. on the 6th of January 2021, it showed us from the president of the United States to even one of our state senators here, Josh Hawley, in the state of Missouri, giving a fist like this here, power to the people, to those that was going in there. Then one of the other senators said he didn't feel threatened. Uh, but if it was Black Lives Matter or Altifa, he might have been uh, afraid. Then with this recent uh, mass killing where this white individual shot and killed eight, I believe, females, six of them to be Asian. And they said, the captain said, uh, the guy said he was having a hard time. Who give a doggone what type of time he was having? Uh, and he done actually took eight people lives unjustifiably. They said, he said, the murderer now said that it wasn't racism. He just so happened was having a bad time. This is a white guy. And this is no no disrespect to white people, but I'm sick and tired of when these some white individuals lay here and kill people. They end up, I think it was, uh, what was it, in Montgomery, Alabama, wherever it was, when they killed all, when this white guy killed all them blacks in, when they was in Sunday school, when they caught him, the police said he was hungry, so they fed him at Burger King. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but hey, hey now. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, man? Good seeing you back, man. But but anyway, now, most times when Arabs, when one Arab do something, they'll put a ban on on Muslims. When blacks do something, it's, it's a whole day they either shoot us down. But I just want to let y'all just see something now. Listen what that captain and some of the police said about this latest shooting. Why would you even let that come out of your mouth, what he said, that he was having a bad time? I guess that justified, and I guess they're going to lead to saying that he has some type of mental illness. What they should be doing is preparing, if that state has the, the uh, death penalty, uh, get ready to give him the death penalty. Don't let him get no plea barking to get life in prison. He took eight people's lives unjustly. I give it to the aging people. They're standing up. You see what I'm saying? They're standing up to this white guy that murdered them. They ain't just sitting down. You see what I'm saying? Black folks, this ought to show some of y'all that's out here carjacking, 
uh, doing this black on black crime. This should show y'all something. And you notice a lot of them. I mean, I ain't, I ain't knocking the people with the big beard. But, you know, since they want to uh, stereotype people, the white guy that came on my porch. I mean, on, in my driveway a couple of days ago. He had one of the more big beards. Now, the police, when they got him, they gave him two tickets now for threatening me. I'm a senior. It should be more than a two tickets, but I ain't going to even worry about it. But what I want to show y'all a pattern now, not just here in Charleston, Missouri, but in the United States, period. Now, they gave him two tickets and let him go. Gave him a court date for the 14th of April. More than likely, they're going to do the same thing they did to the individual assault me. They're going to let him uh, get uh, uh, give him a fine, probably 10 or 15 dollars. You see what I'm saying? And tell them they're going to give him jail time next time you go over there and you don't kill Raymond Lewis Ivy. But anyway, when this guy got out, the police told me the same night he went over there on Lawnmower Street to the black female that he married to, but she don't want to, you know, she didn't want him in the house, so he ain't on the lease. He went over there arguing with her, trying to break in her house. But I'm assuming he's still walking around. But guess what everybody say? Oh, he on drugs. <laughs> you know, when the police arrested him, you didn't see him try to fight them out. You didn't see him cussing them out. But the point is, y'all, you got to watch and be careful. I pray before I take my children to some of these doctors, especially here in Southeast Missouri. Well, I ain't going to say Southeast Missouri, uh, Charleston or Sykes in Missouri. I, I, I be careful, man, because one doctor allowed my daughter to come see him three times, February, March and April with some of the same symptoms. He never took a COVID test. He never took uh, any blood. He never ran any tests. He kept giving her antibiotics until that one fatal time. Oh, I ain't going to say fatal time. That last time in April, I'll never forget it, April the 9th. When we went to see him, he gave her antibiotics for the third time. He said, we're just going to try different ones. On the 10th of April, a, a little bit after midnight, my daughter told me she was having chills. She took her temperature, her temperature high. I took, I skipped past Sykes in Missouri and took her to Cape. Immediately, they looked at her lungs and they said her whole left lung was full of pneumonia and it was working to the right. I still got time if I want to sue this doctor. This doctor had been seeing my children since they was birth, since they was born and they going on 15 and 16. I changed doctors. They called a couple of days later after my daughter admitted in St. Francis Hospital. The people from the, where my do daughter was going, they said we was coming. To, we was calling to check up on Queen. I said, why are you calling to check up on her now? You see what I'm saying? You know where she at. If y'all had did your job, she wouldn't have had her lungs full of pneumonia. It done did some damages to her lungs, but the doctor said she'll recover from it. But my point is, y'all. You got to be careful when you walk in these stores. If you got if you got a license to carry, I, I advise you to carry. If it's open carry, if I had if I could carry, I'd be carrying me an assault rifle on one hand and probably hand grenades on the next because you don't know what these people are going to do. But I want I want to say this here another thing y'all watch who y'all let watching your kids. Did y'all just seen what happened last night? Uh, 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 March the uh, 17th of 2021 on 63rd in Wabash on the third floor a 8 year old a 5 year old a 8 year old girl with her 5 year old brother and a 2 year old brother was in her apartment alone now the news thing said at first that the mother uh, left them alone but the mother said I don't know what the what the uh, uh, real story is, but the, the bottom line is a eight year old, a five year old and a two year old shouldn't have been in the house by itself. The mother said she was at work and she left them with a neighbor to watch. But look at this here. The house was on fire. The eight year old had enough sense to take a mattress and throw it out on the ground and jumped. 
The five-year-old was in the window ready to jump. But the fireman came. And I give a high honor to the fireman that came and went up on the ladder and got him. But they didn't end there. They went in. Hey, hey, how y'all doing? How you doing? They found the two-year-old. The two-year-old didn't have the mind to jump. Had the fireman not came and I give it to the young girl, I don't think she abandoned her five and two-year-old brother. You know what she was doing? She knew if I threw this mattress down, if I survived jumping down on that mattress, she had more sense than some of these grown people that I see out in the streets now. Especially y'all out there doing this black on black crying. Especially some of y'all men and women that's out here leaving your kids out in the streets. Why you, if you're a woman, you're chasing after a man. If you're a man, you're chasing after a woman. But that eight-year-old had enough sense. She should be classified a hero. But she survived. But the, they got the four-year, the five-year-old and the two-year-old. Now, somebody should be held liable for that. The mother said she left him with somebody else. I don't know who left him with, but y'all got to be careful who you leave your children with. You see what I'm saying? Whether it's your neighbors, whether it's somebody else, do some research. And black folks stop killing each other. Black folks, Rodney King said it even when the, some of the Los Angeles police uh, beat him half to death. What did he say? Can we all just get along? You see what I'm saying? It's possible. Hey, hey, how y'all doing? I ain't going to ask you. I know who the best basketball player, and I know Kobe said he can beat all y'all in basketball. He, nah, he, he ain't telling the truth. Oh, the but anyway, now, they, see, these some young, respectful young guys. Everybody don't, you know, utter out negative things. Some of these young guys is play sports. But, but this is what I want to say is be careful, y'all. All police ain't bad. All firemen ain't bad. White folks, all black folks ain't bad. You see what I'm saying? Black folks, all white folks ain't bad. That was some white firemen and black firemen that saved that young girl. You see what I'm saying? When I worked on Amalance, I seen prejudice. Back in the 80s, on Marquette Park, the, the white folks at Holy Cross Hospital, they'll call you the N-word real quick. Even when you're working on Amalance. And it's still happening now. I walk to the post office sometime here in Charleston, Missouri. I speak to some people, they don't even say nothing. And I just say to myself, <laughs> you know, it's not going to hurt me. But you can tell. You see what I'm saying? Y'all, black folks, I mean, I ain't talking about you. I ain't talking about you sellouts. Y'all y'all stay in your own corner. Because if slavery come back, y'all will be the first ones to show the master where people like me is at. But when, they, when, they, when you show them where they're at, where I'm at, believe me, I'm going to be a force not to be reckoned with. Black folks, we don't have to be passive. We don't have to be militant, but we don't have to be passive. That's what they want. People study, come to me here in Charleston, Missouri. God don't want you with these YouTube. God don't, God don't want you with these negative messages. How can a negative message be black folks stop killing black folks? Black folks stop letting black folks run over you. Use this grant money. You see what I'm saying? And use it for themselves. I ain't, I ain't gonna even go on that no more. But this is this is what I want to say, y'all. Let's pray for that. Let's pray for that family that that had that little girl had to jump out that that window. See, it ain't over with because that gonna traumatize her. It's something that uh, traumatized the five year old. The two year old probably can't even remember what was going on. But we thank God that he was saved, y'all. Black folks, if you if you can. Get you an education. You see what I'm saying? Some of y'all get on that police force and make up the ranks. Because y'all see, sometime when certain... Okay, another thing I want to... Before I get... Uh, uh, they said Biden... Well, I, I heard him say it. Biden wants the flag going half-staff in Washington in all the public places in, in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, for the shooting of the agents. I don't have anything wrong with that. But can we get the half flag uh, in the whole, around the United States or in Illinois for the 15 that got shot a, a couple of days ago at this party? I don't care if it was at a party or not. I don't care if it's game bangers doing the shooting or not. But the people that got shot and killed, 
Let's show some respect to them. The only way we're going to get it, we're going to have to do like them Asians doing. They getting together. You see what I'm saying? Look at the bills that they passing. You don't hear nothing about trying to stop this black on black violence, but they and they no 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 disrespect to the immigrants because I, I have a granddaughter that's Mexican. And her mother is a, a real her mother and her grandmother is real good people in in the in her aunties. But they they passing the, the, uh, uh, a, a bill for the for the for the dreamers. They even passing a bill for the discrimination and the attacks on Asians. Let's get some bills pay, uh, uh, passed to stop this black on black violence. Y'all done went over to all these countries. Obama, you went, you had them go over there and kill Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein ain't did a doggone thing to us over here. You see what I'm saying? Y'all went over there killing other, other uh, leaders. You see what I'm saying? Muammar Gaddafi, he ain't did nothing to us. Y'all run EDI mean. Y'all trained them in Britain. But then when y'all trained him and he got to run in Uganda in, in the 1970s, y'all chased him on out. You see what I'm saying? Y'all did Noriega the same thing. When that, when that uh, treaty, that, that treaty uh, uh, that was up for the 99 years for the Panama Canal, Noriega said, Antony Noriega said, we, I don't need y'all to help me with this drug flow. I can do this myself. I'm going to text y'all. What did y'all do? Go over there and arrest him. You should arrest every Ku Klux Klan, every Nazi, every skinhead that's in the United States. But y'all ain't going to do that. Y'all keep on thinking Raymond Lewis Ivory is crazy. I bet you one thing, these two young girls of mine, they ain't crazy. Why you think we don't participate in nothing here in Charleston, Missouri? And there's good people here. You got a few good black business people. And you got to just take a look around. God is taking inventory. Y'all better stop trying to attack me. God is sending you to the cemeteries. God is sending you to the penitentiaries. Ask some of them that's in the, in the jails now. Ask some of them that's on the run now. <laughs> they supposed to have been killers, but they out there telling on people. But they said, I'm a snitch. I don't know none of your business. The only business I know when you come over here on my property talking about doing something to me. And let me tell you another thing. Y'all better try to get some black police on the Charles, Missouri Police Department. Try to get some black sheriff deputies, y'all. Let's make some history here in Charles, Missouri. I'm going to leave as I came, y'all. Those of y'all that think I'm crazy, keep on thinking that. You see what I'm saying? Those of y'all that keep coming and threatening me, I'm going to tell you again, y'all the ones that got away. You better take an inventory, y'all. It's easy to get access to my records, and I'm not proud of it. You see what I'm saying? But I hate to repeat anything that I did in the past, especially taking somebody's life or handicapping them for the rest of their life. When you get ready to put your hand on me again, or you keep running up on this property, <laughs> you're playing Russian roulette. <laughs> you may think you see a gun with one bullet in it, but it's going to be fully loaded. Y'all go tell the judge that I don't have no gun. You see what I'm saying? Malcolm X said, when the mind is a weapon, you never unarmed. Peace be still. Those of y'all ain't sellouts, cut your ties with these sellouts. Those of y'all that's white that ain't racist, cut your ties with these white supremacists. Because when you hang with the white supremacists or you sell it, you hang with the sellouts, you consider the sellout. If you hang with the, uh, the white supremacists, you consider the white supremacists. You don't hear see me hanging with none of them. You see what I'm saying? I don't care what they say about me. They keep calling me a pedophile. Tell me who daughters or who kids that I done did something to. But I can show y'all better than telling y'all if you take inventory of the NAACP, you will find convicted rapists and convicted voter frauds and a few other ones. Peace, peace. Oh, let me show y'all something else. You, you see, you see this here, how that grass looking there? Every year, my daughters and them, when the winter come, they, they trample through here. When they friends come, I don't let none of them in the house so my cameras can see everything so nobody won't say that I mess with their child. But even though people don't say it, it's just a, my enemy said it. But I planted what they call Kentucky 31. Some of y'all from the South know what I'm talking about. That's that nice, fine, uh, green or bluish like grass. But, you know, you see how it is now in eight to ten weeks. 
it going to be just like me. You see, 40 or 50 years ago, when that white guy came up on my thing, all I would have did was just laid him out, stopped his heart from beating, and called the police and turned myself in. When these other individuals been threatening me or did stuff to my kids, I take them out and then call the police and turn myself in. You see what I'm saying? But see, I don't have to do that now. God said just reveal them, expose them, and you know what? Get out of the way. And I thank all of y'all down here in Charleston, Missouri, and I don't have to name y'all names that give me support. When my kid's mother died, y'all, some of y'all stopped over. Ain't no family here in Charleston, Missouri did it. But other people came that I met since I've been down there. Y'all came. Y'all even gave my daughters and them something. Y'all asked us that we need money and food for transportation going up. I love y'all. And I love my family in the city too, y'all. Hey, it's some good people down here in Charles, Missouri. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Raymond Lewis Ivey ain't leaving it to God say so. Peace be still.